Okay, here we go. We've got some knife mail, guys. <laughs> and opening today is the Hinderer, the XM18 3.5 slicer. And uh, I have yet to sharpen this knife because it hasn't needed it. <laughs> I'm serious. I um, I really don't don't want to have to sharpen it if I don't have to. I mean, that's just how it is. It has n nothing to do with the fact that I have 11 other knives that I have to sharpen and get in the mail by Monday. <laughs> I'm just joking around. Anyway, it does a great job. It's an awesome, wonderful knife. I love it. The feel of it. It's just a, a great knife. It, it's actually smaller uh, for my hands than I thought it would be, but it's it's still perfect. It's not bad. It's a keeper. I'd, I think I'd like to have the 24, though, to try it out, just to see. Okay, and here we go. Let's pull out some spongy stuff to uh, give to you guys in the future when I'm mailing your knives. Yes, I do save that stuff. Got a cool little knife pouch. And um, this, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be a Red Horse Knife Works. You got it. A war pig. Wow. That is a beauty right there. It has uh, some extra special work that was done on the spacer, the back spacer, as you can tell. That's pretty cool. I like that. And um, this right here, that is extra to polish this thumb groove. That way you can uh, flip it that way or use the flipper. So uh, here we go. I'm going to give it a shot and see how it goes. Oh, I slipped. <laughs> My fingers are slick. They evidently have oil on them from this knife. Oh wow, it is lubed up. Yeah. I'll wipe some of that down. That's nice. It's good to keep them uh, that way, especially when in transit. You know, in the mail, because uh, you never know what type of climate or weather the knife will go through. And this smells like frog lube actually <laughs> I think that's exactly what it is uh, John Grimsmo sort of enlightened me on on uh, tough glide and uh, now that's exactly what I use the reason being the uh, frog lube is great if you lubricate your knives weekly if you uh, keep a fresh coating then it's going to, to be great. However, if by chance you're uh, one of the kind of people who you don't get into that, well, you're going to end up with some uh, some dust attracting and some gumminess sticking in it and not uh, flipping very well. But this is a beautiful knife. Blade is perfectly centered, just like I was told it was, and I saw it in the pictures and videos. And uh, it's really a sweet blade. Yeah, I love how that flips out. Jim Skelton, uh, I was talking about this on one of his videos, and uh, he had a, a point about uh, it not being such a huge knife, but yet it still feels like it is, and that blade is so, wow, so awesome, the way it kicks out there, too. I love it. Early lockup on this one, I would say about uh, 35 percent. Is that what you guys are uh, assuming from the, the looks of things? About 35 percent, maybe. Let me lay it down here for you, and then uh, you guys can look at it and see what you think. Well, I can operate the camera, okay. Eventually he's going to find you, so you might as well go face him now. It'll hurt, but at least you'll get it over. So, 
So the guy says, grab him. I thought you said, stab him. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the TV. I should have turned that off in the background. I apologize. Here's the Red Horse Knife insignia, their logo, whatever. I like this. Very cool. I'm really digging that polished thumb access area. That's pretty sweet right there. And they do charge extra, as I said, for that. Anyway, this uh, blade is 3.25 inches, so it's uh, probably a, a lot larger than than I give it credit for. My fingers have so much slick, uh, tough glide and or frog lube from this knife on it. It's not uh, it's not flipping as well. And I wiped it down. I'm gonna have to do a little more wipe wipe job. <laughs> A little bit about this knife, the blade is D2. That's some great tool steel. I don't know if I can flip it out by by the thumb hole or not. Because it, it's, it is tight. It's got a great detent on it. But the you use the flipper and it out it goes. Out she comes. Going to take a little working on it, breaking it in. Features a compound grind, of course, and that's the hollow V ground belly and convex ground tip for, they say that's for maximum strength and durability. And I like that stonewashed satin finish. That is pretty cool looking. Can you, can you get that on camera? Hopefully so. Now, they say this particular knife or this blade was built for extreme field work. I can see someone taking this, not for the money that I've got invested in it. I don't think I would take it out into the field and work with it, but, uh, you know, m maybe you other guys would. But that's, uh, that's what they say it's made perfectly for extreme field work. And uh, whether you know it or not, the Red Horse Knife Works, I've done a little bit of, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, of my homework on them before this knife came in because I sort of wondered about it. I'd never heard of of Red Horse Knife Works, but I had heard of a, of a war pig. I just wasn't familiar with it. Uh, this one is the one that uh, you probably saw on Blade Forums for sale sweet knife too but all of their blades they heat treat on location in the house right there and and they do it in small batches they do that they said for quality control in their uh, their kilns and which are digitally controlled by the way which I think that's really cool and then they test out each blade for uh, the proper hardness the the RC or the Rockwell hardness yeah this is awesome and that clip is really pretty cool too I didn't think I would like that that clip but I do anyway they say that uh, according to what I've read on their website that that particular way of doing their heat treating in-house by small batches is the best way of quality control and the highest form that you could come across in the knife world today. So I guess, you know, they've got a point. You know, when you, you do them like that yourself, small batches, little at a time, then you get to uh, get what you really want. And uh, by the way, the um, lock side of the handle features a, a 3 sixteenths thick titanium scale that's stone washed as well for durability they say and uh, it's this is the full titanium version of course you that's obvious and all their frame lock knives are available in full titanium construction as well as uh, dual titanium scales and when you get that you've got a knife that's nearly indestructible I guess you'd say plus it's it's really sort of lightweight um, it's got stainless steel cages and 440C ball bearings inside. That's something I thought was cool. 
and they utilize Alpha Knife Supply for their bearings, which is a pretty good, high quality uh, company and method. This weighs 7.52 ounces, according to the stats, and uh, let's see, all liners are frames and, and frames are constructed using knife maker grade 5. 6AL4V titanium that has been precision ground flat. And by the way, all their knives feature carbonized locked faces. That's carbonized on the lock face. They say that prevents premature lock face wear as well as ensures a, uh, a smooth unlocking motion. And they're right. I can tell. It's obvious when it comes time to unlock it. I'm serious. Watch this. It just, it's flawless. Right out the right out the gate when you push that over, all because of that. They say they they achieve that essentially welding a very thin layer of tungsten carbide to the face of the lock bar. So that's pretty wild. And the pivots, that's 416 stainless vacuum heat treated to 42 RC and machined to 0.0002 tolerances. That's the finest pivots available. They at uh, at according to what I've read at uh, Red Horse Knives. I, I don't know if you've read much about them or not, but uh, I guarantee if you do, you're going to find out that they are really a, a good company. And uh, they come stainless steel uh, with a standoffs, machined within uh, 0 0.0001 hundredths of an inch, or thousandths rather, sorry. That's uh, thous. Uh, of course, to ensure proper construction and the standoff save weight, allowing easy cleaning and field stripping and reassembly. Of course, this was a custom, uh, uh, a customized little uh, standoff here, and uh, looks pretty sweet. I love it. Great knife. That's it for now. I guess you'll be seeing a lot more of that one, guys. <laughs> Hopefully, you enjoyed that. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.